Good morning, boys and girls. How are you? Good morning. Happy Monday. Everybody stand up on your feet for me. Can you stand up and worship the Lord with us this morning? This is Miss Harrison, my friend. She's playing the guitar for us this morning. Can you wave? Say hi, Miss Harrison. That's right. Here we go. In my wrestling and in my doubts. walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh you are the peace in my troubled sea sing it out with me my lighthouse my lighthouse shining in the darkness Just the promise you will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. Safe to shore. Good job. Let's sing that chorus one more time. You ready? My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining darkness I will follow you oh my lighthouse my lighthouse I will trust the promise you will carry me safe to shore safe to shore safe to 
All right. The next song we're going to sing talks about how big and how mighty God is. Is our God so big? Yes. Okay, sing this with me. You're doing such a good job singing this morning. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. He made the tree. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. Good job. Let's sing it again. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing my God cannot do for you, right? Good job. All right, one more song. Let's talk about how good our God is, okay? Sing loud with me. I think the other classes might can hear you if you sing really loud. boys and girls. Okay, grab a seat. Good morning, boys and girls. How are you today? I just love coming to chapel with you. Thank you, Mrs. Harrison, and thank you, Mrs. Stoltz, for helping us sing. I had to get my Bible out because we have to bring our Bible to chapel, right? This is a special book. It's unlike any other book because everything in this book is what? Real and true. It really did happen, and it really is going to happen. And this is a special book because whose words are in it? God's words are in it. That's right. I am a child of God, and I want to hear God's words. I love God's words. Well, you'll know. We've been talking about this all the time. I'm a child of God. John 1, 12 says that he gave us the power to become his children. That's the best gift ever. I'm a child of God, and you're a child of God, and your mommies and daddies are children of God. Isn't that the best? Can we say it together? I am a child of God. Very good. Can we, we're going to say it with a whisper. Are you ready? I am a child of God. Everybody stand up. Now we're going to say it with a regular voice. Standing up straight and tall and a regular voice. I am a child of God. Now we're going to say it with an excited, loud, excited voice. Are you ready? I am a child of God. Amen. You guys are great. You can sit down. I have a story today about a man who was a child of God. It's pretty cool. He was a child of God, and his name was Joseph. Some of you have heard stories about Joseph. Joseph had a what, boys and girls? He had a coat of many colors. 
I couldn't find a coat of many colors, but I like to pretend. Will you pretend with me today? So I'm going to put on this coat. It's got lots of colors on it, right? It's got some red and green and blue and a little bit of orange. This is, so we're going to pretend that this is Joseph's coat of many colors. So Joseph had lots of brothers, lots of brothers. And Joseph was the baby of the family. That doesn't mean he was a baby during our story, but he was the youngest one. Some of you are the youngest. Some of you are the oldest, and you have a baby brother or sister, and some of you are the baby brother or sister. But Joseph, he was the baby of the family, and his daddy made him a special coat, a coat of many colors, a fancy smancy coat, and he was very happy with his coat. And one day he was talking to his brothers. He was telling them about a dream he had, and they said, where'd you get that fancy coat? And he said, dad made it for me. And he was proud of his fancy coat, and he looked nice. He was talking to his brothers, and do you know what happened? His brothers got jealous, and they got mad, and they got mean. And they took Joseph, and they took off his coat of many colors. They took it off, and then they were extra mean to him. Do you know what they did? They did. You guys know this story. So they threw him in a pit, and then they got him out of the pit, and they sold him. He had to go do some hard work. So I'm going to be a hard worker. You ready? He had to go do some hard work. Let's see. You ready? You can go to slide two. So he had to do some hard work. He had hard work to do. You know, this he did hard work. Like He had to do hard things that made him tired and sweaty. And he was in a land that was not near his home. It was kind of far away. And he'd work hard and he'd get tired and hot. And he just wished he could be back home with his coat of many colors and his daddy and his family. And do you know what? He remembered. He remembered that he was a child of God. And God's child is kind. And even though his brothers were mean to him, and even though he was sad that his brothers were mean to him, and he missed his family and his work was hard, he was still kind. He was kind to everybody he met. He was so kind to everybody he met that he got a different job. And in that job, he was kind, but in that job, some, some stuff happened, and he ended up going to jail. That's pretty, pretty sad. But you know what happened when he went to jail? He remembered that he was a child of God, and he was nice anyway. He was nice even when people were mean. He was kind. He was always kind, and he always remembered that he was a child of God. And he found... Thank you. So he worked so hard, and then God, God honored Joseph, his child, and he gave him a special job, and he got to work for the king. You have to use your imagination again because I did not have a crown, and he got to work for the king. He had a job for the king, so he no longer had to worry about that hard work. He had a nice job, and he was respected, and he had nice clothes. Now, in, the, in all the land, in the, in, the, in the world at that time, in the area where he lived, there was a famine. A famine means that there was not much food. There was hardly any food. But because Joseph is a child of God, he had saved up food. So his land had lots of food. See my grocery bag? He had lots of food when other places didn't have food at all. So sometimes people from the other places would come and they would ask the king for, if, to share their food. And it was Joseph's job to help share the food that they had plenty of with people who had no food. Well, do you know who had no food? Joseph's brothers and Joseph's dad had no food. So they came to Joseph's land looking for some food. And when they saw Joseph, they didn't even recognize him. His clothes had changed and he had grown up, he was young, and now he had gotten older, and he'd gotten really strong from all that hard work, and they hardly even recognized him. And Joseph had a choice to make. People who had been mean to him were now asking him for help. Think about that. Think about if somebody was mean to you, and then they come around the next day and they ask you for help, what are you going to do? Are you going to help them, or are you going to say, you were mean to me, and I am not helping you? You think we should help them. You know what? 
Joseph remembered that he was a child of God, and he knows that God's child is kind. And even though his brothers were mean to them, him, he still loved them. So he helps them. So there we are in the picture. We can see there's Joseph, and he's putting his arms around his brothers, and his brothers were sorry, and he, they, they got to be happy again. I love that story because it teaches us a lot. It teaches us that we need to forgive people and that we need to be kind and we need to remember we are God's child and God's child is always kind. Joseph could have refused to give them food or he could have, you know, he could have ended up even hurting them, but he didn't. He, was, he remembered he was God's child and he remembered to be kind. There's a Bible verse about being kind. Can we go to the next slide? Look, do you remember when we read that story? about I am God's child, and this was the I am kind page. There's that little girl. She's dressed up like a nurse or a doctor because they help people, and so we think of them as being kind. But you don't have to just be a doctor or nurse to be kind. There's lots of other ways to be kind. But what I like is that right here it tells us that we can go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. This is where God tells us we have to be kind. He says, be kind one to another, tender-hearted and forgiving one another even as God, for Christ's sake, has forgiven you. Do you sometimes make mistakes and do bad things? You probably aren't as bad as Joseph's brothers. I'm really thankful for that. But sometimes we might say something mean or we might, you know, not want to share our toys or, or, you know, sometimes we make mistakes. Sometimes we talk when we're really supposed to be quiet. And sometimes, you know, maybe mom says brush your teeth and you act like you don't want to. Those are things that are, are... are not good, but God forgives us for that. For Christ's sake, God forgives you and God forgives me, and God wants us to forgive other people just like Joseph forgave him. So forgiving is one way to be kind, but if God's child is kind, I want us to see if we can come up with some examples of being kind. Mrs. Swagger, I asked your class, Mrs. Swagger's class, pay attention. I asked you guys to think of a time that someone was kind to you. If you are in Mrs. Swagger's class and you can think of a time that someone was kind to you, will you tell us? Say it real loud. He's saying somebody was really gentle with him. They were careful. They didn't want to hurt him and hurt his feelings. That's how somebody was kind to you. Did it make you feel good? Yeah, it makes us feel good when somebody is kind to us. Let's see. Did Miss Swagger, do you have anybody else that wants to tell about someone that was kind to them? I think Mrs. Swagger's class is a little shy, and that's okay. Ms. Swagger, Ms. Wilson, can you think of a time when one of your students was kind to another? Oh, thank you for helping. She helped her friend find the pieces to a puzzle. That is beautiful. Helping your friends and helping them complete something, that is a great way to be kind. I love it, and I'm glad that you guys are so nice to each other. Mrs. Swagger tells me that this class is super nice, and you guys are always kind to each other. I also have Mrs. Miller's class in here, and I asked them a question that was a little bit harder. I'm sure they know of a time somebody has been kind to them, and I'm sure there's a time that they have been kind to to someone else. So I asked Miss Miller's class to think about ways we can be kind to other people during the school day. If you're in Miss Miller's class, raise your hand if you want to answer. Can I have little Miss Girardi or will you tell me, Scarlett? Be kind to your friends. That's right. Tyler. He said, if they don't know what to do, if they're doing a craft and we're trying to follow the teacher's directions and you miss something, your friend can help you. That's a great answer. I like it. Emmanuel, what's a way you can be kind to a friend at school? You want to think about it? Think about it for a minute. Abby.
She says, you can help your friend. If they're struggling with something, you can help them. That's a good answer. And I've watched Abby. She is a kind friend. She likes to tell people nice things, and she likes to give little presents, and she likes to give hugs. She has a very kind personality. And right behind you, Evan. That's right. That's very right. That's very good. And then right next to you. Yes, sir. You guys have some great ideas on how to be kind. I want you all, the people sitting and listening in chapel and the people sitting and listening in their classrooms, I want you to think of ways today that you can be kind. If you feel angry or sad with somebody, I want you to take a deep breath, and I want you to pray about it and ask the Lord how you can respond in a kind way. So when somebody's mean to you, do you have to be mean back? No, you can be kind back, but sometimes that's hard to do. So that's why you might want to stop and take a deep breath and ask God to help you to be kind and show you ways to be kind like our hero Joseph today. Can we pray together? Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much that we are your children. Thank you that you've given us that privilege. Thank you for loving us and help us to remember that God's child is kind. You are the example of love and kindness. And Lord, I pray that we would learn from you and be kind to others. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, I hope you have a fantastic week and a marvelous Monday. Bye-bye.